if you have a formula here, to find a confidence interval for a population standard deviation, sigma, right? You have to know the notation and what it means. So they're not, it's not difficult. Um, you plug and chug. Not everybody's going to have the calculator trick here. So I'm going to, I think the majority don't. So I'm going to use the formula for this. And you need your sample size. And S is sample standard deviation. Because we're using a sample standard deviation to approximate a population standard deviation, right? The point estimate here would be a sample standard deviation, S. And then you're dependent on your chi-squared critical values. Now, I want you to notice that this is the smallest value here, right? The lower end of the interval, and this is the higher end of the interval. Mathematically, if you increase a denominator, a actual fraction goes down and decreases, right? So one-fourth is less than one-half. The larger the denominator, the smaller the total fraction. So the larger denominator would be the right-tailed chi-squared critical value. Remember I said that the right-tailed chi-squared critical value is always going to be the larger one because it's, as we go from left to right on this table, on this distribution, we're increasing our values. So the biggest one should always be right-tailed, and the left-tailed should always be smaller than that. So the formula has the right-tailed chi-squared critical value on the left end, of the interval and the left tailed pi squared critical value on the right part of the interval because this should be a smaller value. Um, not a difficult formula, you don't have to memorize it, you guys usually have a formula in front of you and it's plug and chug once you find your critical value, so it's not very difficult. Um, so let's do an example. So here I have insomnia treatment. So I'm gonna, as I read this, I have to pull my information from the problem, right? Let's see what they give me. And don't forget that, you know, on this kind of test, you guys are dealing with a bunch of different confidence intervals. So now I want you not only to, you know, think about how to do this confidence interval, but I want you to think about um, how do I know which confidence interval that I need to find, right? You know, you have a population proportion, you have a population mean, sigma known, sigma unknown, and now you have a population standard deviation. These are all confidence intervals that you want to find. There's four different scenarios that I just named. You have to be able to read a word problem and decipher between which one you want to find and obviously the methods to find that. So, um, so let's do that. A clinical trial was conducted to test the effectiveness of the drug for treating insomnia in older subjects. After treating with zopiclone, I've never heard of it, 16 subjects, ah, that sounds like a sample size, 16 subjects had a mean wake time, ah, a mean is an average, mean wake time from a sample is X bar, right? Their mean wake time was 98.9 minutes and a standard deviation of 42.3 minutes. This sample had a standard deviation of this. That is S, 42.3. You need to determine whether it's X bar, whether it's mu, whether it's S, whether it's, whether it's sigma. You need to determine that from reading the problem. This mean and this standard deviation come from this sample, so it's X bar and S. Um, okay. Assume that the 16 sample values appear to be from a normally distributed population, which is good because it's less than 30, right? But let's see what we want to find. Construct a 98% confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation of, I'm just going to underline the rest of this that I need because I'm going to use this for my interpretation, of the wait times for a population with zopiclone treatment. Does blah, blah, blah. Does it appear effective? We're just going to find a confidence interval just to practice that. So, all right, I want a 98% confidence interval for sigma, right? I'm gonna read it one more time and look at the stuff that I pulled out. A clinical trial was conducted to test the effectiveness of the drug Zopicone for treating insomnia in older subjects. After treatment with this drug, 16 subjects had, they had a mean wake time of 98.9 minutes and a, they had a standard deviation of 42.3 minutes. Construct a 98% confidence interval estimate for the standard deviation of the wait time for a population with zopiclone treatments. Okay, you guys are going to have to decipher what situation you have. 
Um, if I have time, I'll do a mixture, and you guys will have to tell me, but we'll see. Let's practice a couple of these first. First things first. So that means I'm using this formula. So what do I need? I need N. I have N. I need S. I have S. And I need the right-tailed and the left-tailed chi-squared critical value. Now, you don't always have to obviously draw the curve, but I'm going to draw it for you guys because uh, we'll just, get, you know, just so you can see it. Once I have a confidence level, I can find my alpha, which is 1 minus the confidence level. Right. I'm always going to cut that in half because I have two tails, two different um, critical values. So I have 0 0.02 cut in half, which is going to be 0 0.01. <clears throat> if I draw this beautiful curve, whoa, it's not a beautiful curve. Let's try that again. Okay, it's going to be a skewed to the right because I need a chi-squared type of critical value, and I need a left-tailed chi-squared critical value, and a right-tailed chi-squared critical value. And the area corresponding to the right-tailed is half of alpha, and the area corresponding to the left-tailed is half of alpha. Um, I'm missing something else for my chi-squared critical value. On this distribution, we need degrees of freedom, which is always one less than the sample size. So in this case, 15. So I gather all my information. I have everything I need. Let's go to my table to find the critical values. Now, actually, I'm going to, you know, can actually, before I even go to my table, we know that the area to the right of the right-tailed critical value is 0 0.01. We know the area to the left of the left-tailed chi-squared critical value is 0 0.01. But the area to the right of this left-tailed chi-squared critical value is 1 minus 0 0.01 or 0.99. So I'm going to find that now just so that I can gather all my critical values in one shot and then go into my formula and just fill it in. Okay, so on my table, let's do the right tail first. So the right tail chi squared critical value, my area, let's go here, my area to the right of the critical value is 0 0.01. So I am, you know, the second column from the right. How many degrees of freedom did I have? 15. So let's line that up. Second column from the right, degrees of freedom of 15, right? So I'm going on this row <laughs> here, matching up with area to the right of 0 0.01, 30.578. Let me write that down, 30.578. So my right-tailed chi-squared critical value is 30.578. I'm not done, let's do the left-tailed chi-squared critical value. But the area to the right of that one is 0.99. So 0.99 is the second column from the left. My degrees of freedom are 15. Line it up, line it up. I have 5.229. 5.229, let me write that down. 5.229 approximately, right? Okay, I have everything I need to go ahead and actually find this confidence interval now. So to the formula, which I don't have to memorize. So the center is the population standard deviation. Right? I want the square root of. Let's do this one first. N minus 1 is basically the same thing as degrees of freedom, so 15. 15 times S squared. S is 42.3 squared divided by, it's kind of backwards. This is the right part of my interval and I need the left-tailed chi-squared critical value because it's a smaller value and the smaller the denominator, the larger the fraction, 5.229. And then the left side is really the same numerator, 15 times 42.3 squared. The only thing that changes is the denominator, which is the right-tailed chi-squared critical value, 30.578. I'm not going to have space, but I'm just going to straight plug those into my calculator. Um, so let me show you how to plug that into my calculator. Do I have that up? Yeah. Okay, so let's do the right one first. So I like to, so 15 times 42.3 squared. So 15 times 42.3 squared. I'm going to use this numerator twice, so I'm just going to separate that from everything else. This is my numerator. 
block, 26839.35. Let's go on the right side. Divide that by 5.229. Divide that by 5.229. And then take the square root. Second, square root. Second, negative to pull up ANS. See ANS here. That pulls up the last result. Just for accuracy, I like to do that. You know because otherwise I have to type this whole thing in and that's annoying. 71.6, we'll do 71.64. Well, we'll do 71.6, because we're rounding to the nearest tenth. They had the tenths place, we'll do the tenths place. 71.6 is my um, high end here. 71.6, what were, uh, minutes, right? Don't forget my units. Now, my left-tailed chi-squared critical value has the same numerator, the 15 times 42.3 squared, <coughs> excuse me, is this. So I'm going to take 26,839.35 and divide that by my uh, right-tailed chi-squared critical value, 30.578. 30.578. And then I need to take the square root of that answer. 29.6 rounded to the next time. 29.6 minutes. So I have my confidence interval for sigma, which is the population standard deviation. Um, interpretation. Of course not. Of course I'm not done. Remember, we are. Interpret your confidence interval. You need to know how to interpret your confidence interval. So how do I interpret? We are how confident? 98% confident that the true value of the standard deviation of the, where do I get the rest of it? Weight times for a population, blah, blah, blah. Of the weight times for a pop relation with Zopicone. Zopicone treatment is between 29.6 and 71.6 minutes. Boom.